Hey, what's going on YouTube? I wanted to put together this quick video. I had a uh, Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus fail on me, wouldn't power up via PoE. Tried to do some research online, I really couldn't find anything. Um, I went ahead and got a Quick Charge uh, 3.0 or Quick Charge 2.0, 3.0 adapter, and I was able to power back up via the USB C cord. Um, which was good. I did have a backup, but I, you know, since I was able to power it back up, I, I went this route and, and I kind of did some research online and found a bunch of different options and this is what worked for me. So I just thought I'd put together a quick video to kind of help somebody else out if this happened to them. Um, so you want to lo log into your Synology NAS if you have one and you want to open up Docker and you want to go search the registry for uh, Unify and you'll come up with you know options for unify uh, you want to go with the Jacob Alberti uh, package and so I downloaded it you know it does take a little bit it's a uh, you know 700 meg depending on your internet connection uh, but then once you got it downloaded and you want to or you want to launch it <clears throat> you want to click launch you want to enable the resource limitation I mean, you don't have to do this I wanted to do it just so the controller wouldn't take up all the resources off my uh, Synology um, but, so I set it to um, you know one gig just so it didn't utilize everything uh, you want to go ahead and name the container uh, Unify or Unify Controller, or whatever you want to name it. Uh, and then you want to go down and you want to click uh, Advanced Settings. You want to enable Auto Restart. You know, this will help you if for some reason it fails or, you know, it doesn't start. So then you want to go over and you want to create a new folder uh, inside the Docker folder. Call it Unify or whatever you want, but this will help keep the your files outside of you know the regular where it puts files that way if you had to do an update later on it doesn't mess with any of your files and then you need to mount it so you want to do slash bar slash lib slash unify this mounts uh you know the path of the contain the docker container so you want to click apply uh, the advanced settings, you want to go to network and you want to check the box to use same as host. Uh, this makes it so you can log into your uh, Unify controller with your Synology NAS IP address and uh, a port 8443. So you want to go over to environment and scroll down to where it says uh, bind and you want to change that to false. And then the one right below that you want to change to false as well. Again, I found uh, some of these instructions online and there's a couple different ways to set this up and this is what worked for me and so I just wanted to uh, post it. Um, I also have firewall rules set up on my NAS and so I first tried to navigate over to the IP address of uh, the NAS and then uh, 8 colon 8443 and I was a wasn't able to get in and I realized it's because of the firewall rules. So you want to go click on control panel then go into security. And then under firewall, you want to go edit your rules. Um, and this is where you need to create a new rule. And this one's going to be uh, custom. And then you want to choose TCP. And you want to open up ports 8080, 8443, 8843, 8880, and 6789. I'll put all the ports down in the description below to help you out. You want to click OK, then you want to go create a, another firewall rule, custom again. Uh, this time you want to choose UDP and you want to open up um, ports 3448 and 10001. Again, I'll have the ports listed below. So there, now you're able to IP right into the Unified Controller using your Synology IP address 
colon 8443. This will let you write in to go through the setup process. Um, you want to name your controller and then check the box below and click next. And then you want to log in to your Ubiquity account. Click next and your controller will start to set up. So now that you got your new control running on your Synology NAS, because I was able to get the old cloud key powered back up, you know, if, if I didn't, I had a backup that I was going to use. But I went this route since I was able to get it powered up. I logged back into the cloud key. Um, I navigated over to the site that I wanted to move over. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's an export site button. So I go ahead and click that and then you download the file. So this gives you a kind of a fresh, clean, most recent backup of your site. And once that downloads to your computer, so then you want to navigate over to your unified controller. You want to click import site. You want to name the site and then upload the, choose the file that you just downloaded and click upload and everything will go over then you want to go back to your cloud key controller and finish the setup process by basically I already did it so I'm not checking the boxes or clicking buttons here but you want to confirm it and it basically migrates all the devices over then you want to come back here once you've migrated it all click the next button and what it does is it removes everything from the cloud key. Uh, so if you like this video, please comment, subscribe below. I hope this helped people out. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks.